Hello YouTube, I'm Pedro from the Wicked Cat team. Today we are going to continue to work with the last 3D Collider, the Wheel Collider. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. And if you want more Unity 5 tutorials, remember to subscribe to our channel. Now if you guys remember, on the last video we covered the first section of the Wheel Collider component and we talk about these parameters right here until center, right? From mass to center. So today we are going to, rem to cover the remaining sections of the suspension spring, the forward and the sideways friction. Now keep in mind that these are advanced parameters, so if you are looking for a simple wheel behavior, I would suggest keeping the default values on these sections, since they work just fine most of the time. With that in mind, let's take a look at the next section. So on suspension spring, you can set the values for spring, damper and target position. The spring parameter right here sets the spring force, which attempts to reach the target position. Bigger values make the suspension reach the target position faster. Now, the value you set on the damper depends the suspension velocity. Larger values make the suspension spring move slower. And finally, the target position is the rest distance along the suspension distance. If you want to set the value to zero, it will fundally extend the wheel suspension, while the value one you have a fully compressed suspension. So, if I we take a look at the suspension right here, when I change this, you can actually see that with zero is at full rest, while at one is fully compressed. So let's change it back to 0 0.5. So the following, two, the two next sections are the forward friction and the sideways friction. Both have the same parameters, they have the extremium slip, extremum value, asymptote slip, asymptote value and stiffness. The same as you can see both for forward and sideways. So basically you have uh, the, the friction, you, to, to, in order to understand these parameters you have to understand how a wheel works, right? So. The friction applied to a wheel can be described by the, the wheel friction curve. So I have this chart right here that I'm going to show you guys. That represents uh, this that I'm talking about. So you can, get, can see the representation of this in this chart. So basically you have two curves for the wheel. One for the forward direction and other for the sideways direction. So in our chart right here, uh, we are showing just one curve which could be either for the forward or for the sideways, but the idea is the same. So in both, it's first determined how much the tire is slipping, okay? This is based on the speed difference between the tire's rower and the road. Next, this value is used to find out the tire force exerted on the contact point. Then the curve takes this measure, takes the a measure of the tire slip as an input and gives the force output. So, real tires can exert uh, high forces for low slip, since the rubber compensates for the slip by scratching. So, when the slip gets really high, the forces are reduced as the tire starts to slide or spin. Because of this, the tire friction curve looks just like you can see in this graphic. So, this is just a, the, a, a simple explanation of the physics behind this, okay? So, for to understand this, just use this graphic and we are going to talk about the parameters now and how they are represented in this graph. So, the first parameter that you actually have in both is the extremum slip and the extremum value, right? So, this do, these two parameters are used to find the extremum point. So, you can define the extremum split and the extremum value is the force. So you can find the extreme point right here. R regarding the next two parameters, we have the asymptote of slip and the asymptote uh, value that we can see right here. 
a symptom sleep, a symptom value. Both of them are used to define the asymptote of the of the wheel. So you have the sleep, you have the value, and you actually use it to find the asymptote point, right? So next, the final parameter, which is stiffness, is a multiplier for extreme for extreme and asymptote values. Okay, so changing this value from the default, which is one changes the stiffness of the friction. Setting the value to zero will disable all the friction from the wheel. For example, you can use this if you want to, to be on a surface with no friction, for example, ice, for example. So an icy surface will have uh, low, almost zero friction. So you can simulate that on your wheels by changing the stiffness value to zero, for example. Um, so you can actually simulate uh, several ground materials by changing this value here uh, using a script, for example. Okay. So again, keep in mind that these are advanced parameters and you'll probably get good results using these default values that you can see right here. Okay. So for our specific case, we are going to use these default values uh, because we don't have any need to change them, okay? So, now that we actually have covered all the parameters in the wheel collider, what we actually need to do is to copy and place the collider over all wheels of our truck. So I'm going to do that very quickly. So we have the front wheel, I'm going to copy and paste it right here and I'm going to change the name to left and on the position we are actually going to change this let me see we have three let's change this for 325 minus 325 all right so we have the front wheels ready now actually let's move to the lower view because it will be easier you need to still do this um, the remaining wheels here right so what i'm actually going to do again i'm going to copy i'm going to paste it this time i'm going to set this is the middle middle will write let's call it one and where is the mouse right here okay so let's change this let's change this to here yes better right here i'm going to do this again copy paste and now i'm going to change the name to middle wheel right two and i'm going to place the wheel on the position i want it so yeah i'm going now to change duplicate and now I'm going to change the name this time for left one I'm going to set the minus here so it goes to the other side the same here duplicate so you can either use copy paste or duplicate the results are the same left let me just okay change this and change this value to minus all right uh, and now what I'm actually going to do I'm going to select all these duplicate we have them right here I'm going to actually change the names for rear wheel left to rear wheel left one In this case we want real wheel right to space three it's right here okay and last one and rear wheel right one okay so now we're actually going to select this here and here and we are actually going to move them to here so if we actually take a look at the side 
we now actually can see, let me change the perspective again, we can actually see that now we have a collider, one collider for each wheel, okay? And basically our model is now ready. So on the following video we are actually going to create a small script that will let you drive the truck, okay? So hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson, until next video and have a nice day.